Um, and it's because we do what's called paired end uh, sequencing, which is the way that we actually generate the DNA sequences. Way back in earlier times, I talked about different sequencing technologies. And this particular approach that I'm going to tell you about is really kind of how we do paired end sequencing with Illumina sequencing technology. So basically the approach that you take is we, we have our DNA and using a variety of different techniques. There's, there's different ways you can do this. There's both physical ways um, or biological ways. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to break the DNA into little fragments and we're going to separate them based on size. Depending on exactly how you break the DNA, you can um, really fine tune exactly what your average size of, of those strands are. So normally we'll break them down to be, uh, so the average size maybe is 300 base pairs, okay? Then in the sequencing process, what we do is we take those 300 base pair sequences and we add two adapters, one on each end, to those sequences. And the adapters are different, and in Illumina speak, they're usually called A and B. And there's a, a step where you can purify sequences that have A's on one end and B's on the other. So we get all the sequences that have an A and then a B, different adapters on different ends, okay? Now, on the Illumina sequencing platform, we use a glass slide, which is kind of like a microscope slide. Let's pretend. And on that slide, we have sequences that are complementary to A. And they've been fixed to the glass slide. We also have sequences that are complementary to the B. And they're also fixed to the glass slide. We have our solution of DNA where we've labeled them with A and B. We have our glass slide where we've got A and B. Now basically what we do is we put the DNA onto the glass slide so that we have the A sequence on our sequence. Here's our DNA sequence, our fragment that we're going to sequence. And the A sequence that's complementary to it that's then stuck to the glass slide. Remember that on the end of this sequence, there's a B, and over here, we have a sequence that's complementary to B. We can now do a PCR reaction where we make a copy of the DNA. So using what's called PCR, polymerase chain reaction, we just make a copy of the DNA, and of course, that makes a copy of this B region. With DNA, because it's double-stranded, you can just heat the DNA up, and that forces the strands to, to separate by just heating it up to about 70 degrees. And as that happens, you then have the DNA. So here's our A piece and our A primer. And here's our B that's attached to the glass. Through this PCR and this amplification process, we actually end up with a little bridge forming where we have the B on the glass binding to the B on the DNA and the A on the glass binding to the A on the DNA. Okay, and we get a little bridge like this. And in fact, because in one little area, we have lots and lots of these A's and lots and lots of these B's, we end up with lots and lots of these bridges just in this little area, okay? This is before we've done any sequencing. We haven't done any sequencing, haven't figured out any bases yet. We've just set the scene so now that we can do it. So in one area, in one little dot, we've got lots of copies of the same piece of DNA. We have A at one end and B at the other. And so we can just take a look at one strand of that. So here's our DNA, 
making a little bridge. And so if we sequence starting here in this direction, we'll generate the sequence of one end of the DNA, right? Everybody agree? And then once we've done that, if we wash everything away and start again, we can sequence at this end coming in this direction. Yeah? Okay. So this is how we've got our two ends. So this is often called pass one, and this is called pass two. This is often called the left reads, and these are often called the right reads. These are often called reads that end slash one, and these are often called reads that end slash two. There's lots of ways that you can name them. It doesn't really matter. The point is that you know that this sequence here and this sequence here came from the same piece of DNA. Now, Illumina sequencing, depending on how you do it, you can change the, the read length, but very typical will be to have 150 base pair um, read length from each end, okay? So if our fragment that we start with, if our fragment size is average 300 bases, then if we have a 300 base pair fragment, and we read 150 bases from this end, and 150 bases from this end, we basically won't get any, any overlap whatsoever. If we reduce our fragment size to say 200 bases, and we read 150 bases from this end, and 150 bases from this end, because our fragment's 200 bases, we're gonna have about 50 bases of overlap, right? Alternatively, if we increase our fragment size to say 3,000 base pairs, and we read 150 bases from this end, and 150 bases from this end, we'll never get any overlap. And so we can dial in how big our fragments are depending on how much overlap we wanna get, if we wanna get no overlap, or if we wanna sequence things that are really far apart on the genome. This, having close um, overlaps, helps with assembly because you then can get longer pieces of DNA much easier. But this helps with assembly because if you have repetitive elements, like a 1.6 KB RNA gene that's lying in the middle, you've got reads that flank it and so you can put things together. I said that we can dial in how big we want our pieces of DNA to be, but actually when we do that, of course, it's a little bit of biology, so you end up with a distribution of sizes. So this will be number of fragments of DNA, and this will be the size. And so we might aim, for example, to have 300 base pairs. Some of our fragments are gonna be on the shorter end, some of our fragments are gonna be on the longer end. And so when we try and do this overlapping, some will overlap, some won't overlap. And it just depends how tight we make this. If, of course, if we have a much tighter distribution of sizes, we're gonna have a different proportion that overlap when we see it. 